that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. All right, my friends. This time, it's about the grandfather of finance movies. Greed is right. Greed works. Almost 40 years old, Wall Street. But I think it's still one of the best movies about financial market. The tech is completely out of date, but the characters still resonate today. And that's what makes it. But it's not the hero. His butt fox is quite forgettable. It's the villain, Gordon Gecko, that makes the movie. And Michael Douglas won an Oscar for it. We're going to make our due diligence. And the question that we want to answer is, can you invest in Gordon Gecko? So obviously, he's a villain. He's pure evil. He's all about greeds. He manipulates lies and cheats to make money. We are a fairly conscious investor, so we don't want any of that. So the question becomes, could the 2023 version of Gordon Gecko evolve into something investable? We know that Oliver Stones was inspired by multiple characters that he pulled together, such as Carl Icahn, who is still around today, but also Ivan Boetsky, a trader that went to jail for insider trading. And he was good friends and partner with the best paid guy on Wall Street at the time, the junk bone king, Michael Milken, who also went to jail. But what we have to keep in mind, that's the subtlety of the character, is that although Oliver Stone is well known to be a left-wing director, it's not an outright criticism of Wall Street. His dad inspired the movie because his dad was actually a stockbroker. So that's what I think the character of Gordon Gecko is magnetic. And it's not just the outfits and the sleek hair. There's something about it, right? But going back to the investability, Boitsky and uh, Milken, they went to jail, but they're also barred from working in financial markets for life. So we have to consider is there any point in investing in Gordon Gecko? Because maybe he's never going to be investable. And then the question becomes, do the FBI really have enough to catch him? We see a few bits and pieces in this conversation, which is supposed to be the one that gets him in. I showed you how the system works, the value of information, how to get it. Full of oil, brand resources. But I think it's very light. I don't see any evidence of someone saying I got the information wrongfully. So I think they have nothing on him. And if you look again at the scene where he gets insider information about Blue Star Airlines from Bud Fox. Come on, pal. Tell me something I don't know. It's my birthday. Who knew that only because his father was an insider at the company, Blue Star Airlines. He's a bell somewhere, so what? I still don't know if it's insider information because... Well, there was a crash last year. They just got a favorable ruling on a lawsuit. How come the dad knew that? Maybe there was no official decision. Maybe it was just hearsay and his opinion but without any proof. That even the plaintiffs don't know about. We don't see it, right? Or maybe in the 80s, people would take decision then wait a couple of days to send a press release. And therefore, maybe between this time, people who had an information adventure to, could take care of it without cheating so much. In any case, I don't think he's going inside for a long time or that he'll be barred from trading at all. We can still continue this and look at um, the skills that he has and that can serve us. And this is where the character is really fascinating because he's got multiple skills and maybe a bit too much, which corresponds to the fact that he is the part of multiple characters. He's a trader. 150,000 shares at 18 and a quarter from Jansen. I think I can pull twice that at 18 and a half from the California pensions. A trader would be sitting in his dark room, buying and selling. He is also very good at understanding people straight away. As he sees Bud Fox, he reads right through him and understands that this is someone he can manipulate. 
We also see that he's a great negotiator. Gordon Gecko also faces a big assembly or big boardrooms and has fantastic storytelling and managed to convince people with his charisma and magnetism. In fact, there's so many skills that it brings the other question that I always ask. Is it a realistic character? The fact that he's a short-term trader, a corporate raider and activist, give him kind of a superpower, but makes him less realistic. What could be the 2023 version of Gordon Gecko? Can we find a real life character to model him on? Someone that had trouble with the law, but has managed to overcome it to become a successful player. And there's actually one Wall Street legend that quickly became the ideal candidate. Investigators believed that through Steinberg, they had caught Cohen selling an $11 million stake in Dell Computer based on illegal inside information. Steve Cohen. The government says that Cohen received an email that said, I have a source inside Dell that's giving me information that the quarter is going to be bad. He had to pay a record fine of $1.8 billion. His colleagues went to jail. He was unable to trade for two years. But unlike Boski and Milken, he didn't go to jail. What Cohen's lawyers have said is that he did not read that email before he sold Dell stock. And after enough time had passed, he was able to start again on Wall Street. There are a lot of similarities with Gordon Gecko. He was in deep trouble. His company, SAC, had to close down. The government decided that they found insider trading so pervasive that they wanted to put their foot down and say, OK, this is effectively a criminal enterprise. He had also a similar strategy stock picking. In his first seven years of managing money, Cohen had only three losing months. And style, gaining an information advantage. Cohen's strategy was really based around what people like to call an information-driven hedge fund. That was then. Today, Steve Cohen is known as the Mets owner. That confers him a special status. He is the boss of an even bigger hedge fund than SEC ever was, 0.72. And it's this evolution that can lead the way for Gordon Gecko. And there's three elements to it. SAC was essentially stock picking, a long short equity version. 0.72 is a diversified hedge fund with multiple strategies. And that's very much a trend towards a hedge fund world rather than being a boutique specialist. It seems like the future belongs to umbrella funds that can leverage resources and present a diversified portfolio. The second aspect is the technology and quantitative aspect. Point 72 has different subsidiaries and they're constantly trying to innovate in the way they invest. A third and perhaps more surprisingly is this ESG or impact investing. In other words, trying to do good for the world which perhaps we don't see Gordon Gecko doing, but hey, if Cohen did it, why not Gecko? The background of Steve Cohen and his evolution from SAC to 0.72 today is really a good example that Gordon Gecko could have followed if he existed today. We know he's got the intellect, the people skill, the ambition, what Gecko was missing in the 80s was the technology. Now it's become a key success factor and he could also fully embrace it. And based on that, launch a successful hedge fund that's also investing in private equity and venture capital like Point72. And through our due diligence, we could consider investing in, in him, but only if he had kept the skills and changed the character. Here at Investorama, we don't want to need someone that's always trying to do bad things to people. But overall, what a great character to have as a villain. And, uh, and I understand why it's inspired people to join Wall Street and why the movie has such a lasting appeal. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And also, please let me know, is there any other film or series or just a scene from somewhere that you would like to do some due diligence on? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching.